A few weeks ago, I went to see a movie, and after the show, I stopped by in a bar for a drink or two. Thank goodness I am not Baptist. But I also was wearing my collar, clergy collar, on my neck. So when people saw me in a bar, many of them made big eyes, and one girl stopped by, touched me on my shoulder and said, Father, are you supposed to be here? You are the first priest that I see inside a bar drinking a beer. I told her, I am from, from that Polish church. Oh, that's right. <laughs> going to unexpected places or going to places where people don't expect to see you can be really fun. That evening, I talked to at least six or seven people who all of a sudden felt a need to talk to a priest. And my guess would be that they have not been in a church for quite a while. So we had good, very profound conversations because I went to a bar wearing my priestly collar. Today's first reading, by the way, Roman, where is Roman? Good job. Roman reminded us a story from the Acts of the Apostles. A few days after the Pentecost, when the apostles chose seven men to serve, this was last Sunday reading, one of those seven, Philip, goes on by himself, not asking anybody's permission, all the way to Samaria to preach the good news about Jesus. It sounds just so normal to our ears today. Sure, that's what they did, right? They went off and preached the gospel, healed the sick, etc., etc. Well, it wasn't that normal. You see, you should remember that Samaria was not a very friendly place for Jews, and vice versa. Jews did not like Samaritans. I hope you remember different story from the Gospel when Jesus talks to a woman at the well, a woman of Samaria, when his disciples are surprised, you talk to that woman from Samaritan town? You see, for Jews, Samaritans are at least heretics. Do you know Harry Potter stories? Do you know Harry Potter? So it's like muggles for the people from Hogwarts. They are half-breed. Jews look down at Samaritans as unclean people, as people who don't keep all the commandments, as half-Jews, half-pagan, not as bad as pagans, but not as good as Jews. And so the very fact that Philip goes there to Samaria without asking for permission or blessing of St. Peter is very surprising. Why would he go to Samaria? Out of all places, why Samaria? It is actually the very first time in the Acts of the Apostles that disciples of Jesus go out of Jerusalem, that they leave the city of Jerusalem and start spreading the word 
in different places. And the first place the gospel is being taken to is Samaria. To everybody's surprise, Philip is quite successful in Samaria. So, of course, the 12 disciples, the 12 apostles, were quite upset about this unauthorized mission, and they sent visitation. Let's check up on him. What's going on? They arrive, and surprisingly, they find out that these people believe in Jesus now. And so, the visitation people pray over them, and they receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God confirms the action of Philip the deacon. Very strange. It's almost like going to a bar and meeting a bishop over there. You can meet a priest in a bar, me, but picture meeting a bishop in a bar. That's how strange it was for the apostles to find out that Philip went to Samaria on his own without asking for permission. I guess it's true what they say. It's easier to ask for forgiveness than for permission. I bet at least hundred dollars that had he asked P Peter, can I go to Samaria? Peter would have told him, are you out of your mind? Do you know what people will say about you? This weekend we celebrate Memorial Day. We think of all the men and women who served in the military forces, who served to protect our freedom. And of course, we think of the greatest generation, the people who fought in World War II. Very few of us can say we remember these days. But from the history lessons, we know how isolationist America was before the war. Before Pearl Harbor happened, nobody wanted to go to war. Remember that lessons? Until Japanese attacked our Pearl Harbor, the main policy in the States was, let's not go to Europe. This is their war, not ours. We are happy where we are. And it took Pearl Harbor to happen for us to change our mind. It took this tragedy for America to wake up and save the soul and the body of Europe. Imagine what would have happened if Americans said, we don't get involved in that conflict. Poland would be no more. France would be no more. All Europe would be Third Reich. It was somewhat like Philip going to Samaria. It wasn't a war that we wanted to get involved in. It wasn't something that we expected ourselves to go to. And yet we did. And it made a huge difference. Without American involvement in World War II, the history of Europe, I bet to say the history of the world, would be different. It took Americans to go to Samaria in Europe to change the fate of the world. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will guide us where we don't expect to end up. Sometimes it will be Samaria, 
Sometimes it will be Europe. Sometimes it will be a bar. In our parish, in this next month of June, our parishioners will be involved in two different public events in which we will be the only Catholic people officially standing there or walking there. First, we'll have Susan G. Common Race for the Cure. And you remember a few years ago, Archbishop Burke said no Catholics could go there. We did. Not because he told us not to, well, partially, but because we thought it's the right thing to do. Of course, we wish they didn't give any money to the abortion programs, but the major idea and message behind Susan G. Common Race for the Cure is much more powerful than that. And we as Catholics want to be there. We want to give witness that we care about that issue, that we are going to reach out like Philip went to Samaria. People don't expect me to walk in my pink shoelaces and Roman collar in Race for the Cure, but I do. Because I want them to know that the Church is with them, that the Church does not abandon them, that Jesus is walking beside them. That's one place. Another place, our Church will have a team on St. Louis Pride Festival for the second time this year. Again, not many people expect to see a Catholic booth at the Pride, and yet we do. Because, once again, we want to be with the people. We want to tell our brothers and sisters that God loves them, and God is with them, and the Church is with them. That's why I put my Roman collar on and spend a day or two at the pride booth. People don't expect a priest over there. But we, as the people of faith, have to go to places that can surprise us, that people won't expect us. We have to go to places where we can spread the good news of God's love. And the Spirit will come. The Spirit will confirm our ministry. And the Spirit does confirm our ministry. In two weeks, we will celebrate Pentecost Sunday, the time when the Spirit came upon disciples. The very same Spirit comes to be with us. The very same Spirit encourages us to go out to different places. It's not difficult to be good Catholic inside church once a week, but try to be a good Catholic in a bar. Try to be a good Catholic at your workplace. Try to be a good Catholic at the Race for the Cure or the Pride Festival. Try to be a good Catholic when you go to a barbecue tomorrow or Monday morning. We don't need to keep our faith to one day a week, one building in our life. God sends us as God sent Philip to Samaria. And that Samaria might be different places, different people. Don't be afraid to go where the Spirit of God sends you.